Hey folks, today we have two amazing guests and we're going to be talking about what's new in July. We will start first with Hubbard, who's going to walk us through the new UI, then we're going to talk about the new LTS runtime, and he will finish by talking about Salesforce and their Lake House Federation. Hello everyone, uh, we have some exciting news. So first one is really simple. There is new style of UI in Databricks. I really like it. And you can enable it for yourself. Just go to previews and click uh, which one, improve navigation and homepage. And after that, you will get new nice colors. In recent months, there was uh, a lot of improvements to UI, but it's the first one which is concentrating on, like you say, style sheet, yes, on graphic design. Uh, another update which I want to show you is new runtime. So when you go to create cluster, you have new LTS runtime. So it will get a long lifetime support. And for me, the most exciting news uh, about this runtime is that you can enable uniform without rewriting the tables. So it's enough to to execute alter table and you can enable uniform for your for your table. So then your table can be read also as for example iceberg. And another update is that under Lakehouse Federation when we go to connection we have first SaaS platform, which is Salesforce. So now you can see your Salesforce data in Databricks Unity catalog without ingesting that data. So you can just use, for example, Unity catalog, catalog functionality just to like catalog this data without ingesting it, and you can see what is there. So it is a really nice improvement, and. We hope that soon the list will be much more longer. And another updates are related to system tables. There are really a lot of really nice uh, improvements and that improvements will be presented by Quentin. All right, so we have a lot of updates on system tables. Uh, so seems for, to access the system table, you can see them in the catalog or you know, just running any SQL query, so in that case, I'm in the SQL query editor and I'm, you know, opening the system table and you can see all the existing system tables. And we have two big updates. Uh, so the first one is on the system table query.history. So that's the table you can use to run any query to analyze well your query history within your warehouse. So in that case, for example, I'm selecting, you know, all the queries I recently ran and I'm filtering by total duration time. So I can see all the query I'm running. Uh, and you can have all the details, so you know who ran the query, what's the status, so we can see a lot of failed queries, and you can even see the actual query, um, so the select I'm running, trying to do some AI function calling uh, using my warehouse, and then you can check everything up until the, ex the execution time, uh, so you have the execution time here, so super useful to know what's going on, who is doing what, who is running the stupidly slow query, for example, uh, that one, that's me, <laughs> and you can filter on that. <laughs> so that's the first use case. And then you have a second update with the node timeline table within computes. Um, so I'm gonna show you that. Uh, you can use the table to analyze your cluster. For example, you can query um, the average CPU utilization. It's super useful to see which cluster is underused. Uh, and, and if it's underused, well, maybe you can save cost and, and do something about it. Um, so go ahead, check it out. Uh, like it's super powerful and you know, available for you out of the box. So that's it for the system table. We also have a big update on AI. Um, so recently, Meta released a new model, Llama 3.1, uh, and Databricks released them as a model serving endpoint right away for you. So you can start using them. It's super simple. You have three, you have two versions of 3.1. Uh, so the first one is like the really big uh, model with 400, uh, 405 billion uh, and, and, and then you have the smaller one, 7 CB. You can use them. If you want to give it a try, I would recommend opening the playground on the left. You select which model you want to use, um, so like the big one or the medium one. Let's use the big one and you can run you know, any question. Let's summarize something. You will ask the question and boom, you get the results right away. Um, so super easy to use. 
give it a try and you can use that within your LLM and RAG and, you know, uh, AI systems. Joseph, do you want to take over for the rest? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Quinton. I will start first talking about um, Lakeflow. Remember at the Data and AI Summit, we did announce a new, uh, let's say, uh, a new offering which is a solution that contains everything uh, you need to build and operate production uh, data pipelines. It includes new natives, high scalable connectors for database like SQL Server and other enterprise applications. And it has several options, or let's say uh, two parts, ingest, transform, and orchestrate. And today I'll be talking about uh, Lakeflow Connect, which is now has been gated uh, public preview. It has been announced just two days ago and it includes several connectors. We have now SQL Server, Salesforce, and Workday. In the roadmap, we'll have later ServiceNow, Google Analytics, SharePoint, Postgre, SQL Server, uh, on premise. And of course, as uh, mentioned over here, the roadmap would include also deeper feature, which include uh, a UI uh, for connector creation, a data lineage, SCD type 2, data sampling, and robust sch uh, schema evolution. Which means now you can bring your data from SQL Server, kind of be ingested using streaming tables and MVs to run your transformations later, of course. Uh, the, the feature will, will, will get robust by adding more connectors, more features. Second one, it's more about uh, Delta Share. Delta Share now uh, help or give you the possibility to share liquid tables. But also, now you can also share, uh, let's say, metadata of tables. By metadata, I mean the uh, description of the column, but also in case you have created a primary key and for a key, that's all, it, it will also be possible. And last but not least, you can now share also models that uh, you have uh, developed. We will switch to serverless. Now we have a GA, uh, serverless workflows and serverless notebooks. So for workflows, basically, you don't longer need to create a cluster, choose the configuration, number of workers, you just open the platform, go to workflows, and then uh, choose the computer serverless, nothing else to do. And same thing for notebooks, you just open the platform and select uh, serverless and you're, uh, you're good to go. Let me show you quickly how it, it looks like. I share my screen. Here we go. So we'll go to workflow, create a job. Let's call it test. I'm going to select any random example. And you see here the compute serverless. That's it. It's very easy, nothing else to do. And you can uh, run your task. And same thing, if we, if I want to use notebooks, I'm going to just discard change. I will create my notebook. And then I have over here serverless. And I can just go and write down one plus one and run my compute. It's very easy and you can track those costs using uh, system tables and you have some de uh, dedicated SKU. And I guess that's pretty much everything what wanted to, to present for this uh, month.